What's going on everyone? This is Will here from the Commander Duo. Got a new tutorial video out for you guys. This is going to be on um, Card Conjurer specifically. I have done kind of a tutorial on Card Conjurer. Um, it was mostly just a tutorial on pretty much everything start to finish on proxies including how to use Card Conjurer. This tutorial is specifically just going to cover it a little more in depth uh, for those who are just looking to use this application or this program um, and already have knowledge on the other things as well as just touching base on a couple things and some uh, comments that I've received from people just kind of answering all that is what this video is going to be about today. Um, so yeah, before we get started with any of that, I'll go ahead and go to the about section. Uh, so you can learn a little bit about this. So there's a guy named Kyle. He's the one that made the site, programmed everything, and puts up the frames for everyone. He has a little story on kind of, you know, him and what he's doing and uh, whether or not you want to, like, support him, you can through Patreon. This helps him with server costs, running it, and just just overall his time with keeping the frames up to date with all the new sets that Magic keeps printing over and over. <laughs> it's probably a lot to keep up with. <laughs> but anyways, um, here are just his three little tier pledges. They actually have some pretty cool things you can get. You can ask them questions, support, all of that. And just, just if you want to help them out, I mean, if you really use this site a lot and you like it and you want to help them out, even just a dollar per month um, helps them out. But that's totally up to you. He does have patrons at the moment. Um, so I don't know if you want to change that number or not or leave it where it's at. Uh, but it looks like he is getting, you know, a little bit. I'm sure that helps him cover the site, but just not any of the extra things he does. But, I mean, anything really helps. Anyways, it's, it's totally optional. This site is free. He has it, um, you know, he's not pressuring you or anything for that, and neither am I. But, yeah, if you want to support, go for it. If not, you know, it is it is there to access, and I think this site is awesome, to be honest. It... It can be a little tricky. It has a little bit of a learning curve at first, but once you get it down, it's really nice and I think it is the best program for card making and just overall just looks so good. So anyways, let's get started. And this is where we get started. You just click get started or from the bottom you just pick creator. Either way, it takes you to the same place. So first thing that I recommend starting with is picking your frame when you first get to the site and you've never used it, it it's a lot to look at but when you break it down tab by tab it's really not too bad um i know when i first was on here i was a little overwhelmed but i, I figured it out pretty quickly so first of all for frames this is where you'll go to select different frames you have so many frames to choose from he's got mystical archive and extended arts um pretty much everything i mean even the the new um, gilded look, pretty cool. It's like a different one that's a little bit, um, I'm not sure the difference on that, but um, Art Deco? Yeah, that's another one. I'm not too sure what that is, but it's pretty cool. Interesting. I'm sure you guys would know what that's from. I, I don't, to be honest. Um, yeah, anyways, there's, there's a ton of stuff. Even your more standard, this is like the most standard go-to is like the the, st the extended art you know you got all your different colors and everything so that's nice too for this tutorial I'll be specifically showing because I've had a couple people ask about it the it's called the Godzilla style this is probably like the coolest thing Wizards introduced where in in regards to proxies or custom cards it, it's it essentially is a format where you get to change the name of a card make it your own and then you also include the subtext of what the actual card is so that it's still like a valid playable card. So anyways, we're going to do the multicolor. And as you can see, it adds that secondary tab right there. And that's where you'll put the real name and that's where you'll put the nickname. Um, so if you wanted to do a creature, do that. Um, it, for this tutorial, I'll actually just make uh, the same Aloro Overlord thing I did. But I'll, I'll use a different art just to switch it up and just show you how it works. Another thing I actually didn't know that someone pointed out, and I appreciate that, um, is in the Import Save tab, you can actually auto-load the card you're looking for. 
even if you don't put in the full name, it'll pick up on it. So one thing you'll notice, though, it's going to autofill like everything. It's going to try to grab a picture and all that stuff. So you'll want to go back and delete some of it and change it up a bit. Obviously, the art, too. But either way, it auto-loaded all that stuff for us. If you don't want to do it that way, I just do it like this. It really doesn't take too long. Go on to Scryfall. Look up your Loro. Copy paste. Boom. Just like that. Um, but that's optional. Anyways, for art now, we're going to go ahead and choose a file. That's all you do. I have a ton of Overlord art in here that I've gathered. So we'll do... Let's see, we've got so many. I've used pretty much all of these for my Overlord project. Um, let's go with... Uh, let's go with this. Oh, uh, no, I, I choose. I did that one before. Let's do this one. Boom. So, one thing you'll notice right away is the art auto fits... So you're going to run into an issue where if you're wanting, say, like Ainz's head to be actually like down here, you're going to have to play around with this. And what I mean is uh, right here, this is where you can scale and fine tune it rather than just dragging it. If you're wanting to get more detail on like a specific part, I recommend zooming in. You can either just do this and it'll slowly zoom in. That's only if you need to literally slowly zoom but if you're trying to like actually you know adjust this a little bit better you would do a much higher number obviously this card specifically i don't think i can personally get it the way i want and sometimes that's just the way it is especially with full art so that's why my original one i actually chose this because there's just way more room it already starts out so zoomed out so now obviously we could we could center it and we could actually make it smaller um however you guys want to do this this is just a kind of you got to play around with it a little bit to get it how you want that's nice because you can see pretty much all of them in that image but yeah that's all you do for the art part of it if you do know the artist um the artist name you put that in right here see it auto filled that guy which i think is the one who created the original art so with this i don't even know if this one is sobin sobin does basically all the art for overlord but i actually don't know i'd have to trace this back to the link where i found it and see if the artist is posted you'll notice people post and repost so many times to the point where it can be very difficult to find the artist names especially with like fan art too um a lot of the arts I got from Overlord were from actual scans of the light novels. Uh, they include like this really high res poster and yeah, anyways, totally off topic, but some of those I got that way rather than actually digging around for them. But one, one thing of one piece of advice, and I'm going to address this right now, uh, uh, of some of the comments I got, people were, there's a couple of people that were really offended by me removing the artist information on there and I just wanted to clear that up when I originally made the tutorial I was making it I was in the middle of making my wire well, actually had already made the overlord um, uh, deck and this is something that purely stays at home in my personal collection it's, it does not go anywhere um, and I only play it with friends at home and I know I think 80% of it's so been and then the rest is fan art and I, and I don't know the artist info but it does take a lot of extra time and I spent so long on it but I don't I don't expose this to anybody so this doesn't go anywhere this isn't getting resold I'm I'm not I'm not broadcasting this deck in a way personally where I need to have that there because yes it is amazing it's great to credit the artist don't get me wrong I think it's super important but I mean I'm not showing this anyone. That's the big difference. I wanted it to be a nice, clean look, and to hunt down the artist on all those can be difficult. If you're taking it out in public or going to locals with your custom decks, that's totally different. I, I, I agree. It's, it's definitely nice to have that there. And without a good artist and just these beautiful arts, you really, I mean, you can't even make a good altar. You have to use these arts. And yeah, so that's just my opinion on that. I was just mainly showing you how to do it. I wasn't even really thinking about the fact that, yeah, I was deleting all the 
text down below and just making it black but you can leave that all there you do whatever you want to do i'm not going to tell you how to do that part um if you want to keep it all there remove some of it remove all of it that's at your own discretion but my situation was unique in the fact that i'm the only one ever seeing this essentially and then of course like the few select friends that play with me all the time so that's about it on that um anyways moving on so I don't actually know if this is open, but if it was, that's where you'd put it, and it goes right there. So, boom. So, we're going to move on to the text. We already have our mana set up. We already have the real name set up. So, then you go to nickname, and then you name it whatever you want. You can go to the, you know, Einzelgone, uh, um, and then literally Sorcerer King, you know, Ruler of Nazarick, whatever you want to do. But one thing I will point out, if you go too long in the text it will overtake the mana symbols if this does happen and you're hard pressed on having a long name like this there is something you can do that i found you just go to the mana cost edit the bounds and you can actually just move it so in this situation my favorite place to move it to let me do 1300 okay and then i think it's y that changes it yeah so we'll go 175 Oh, maybe 200 okay I'm just gonna do it like this then boom so I like to move it right there I think that spot works um, in my opinion you can move it wherever you want you could technically move it on top of there or some other place but if that happens that's where I've found to be the best location for it but just move it wherever you want I just wanted to show you that you can technically do that um, but again you don't you don't actually have to so if I I think you can reset the bounds somehow, but I'm not too sure on that. Or you can just leave it. Anyways, I'm just going to leave it for sake of the tutorial. So text is all done. All that's auto-filled. As for the set symbol, I'm going to remove it. I don't know what set that's from, and it's not. I think it's the set the actual card came from. But you can add a set symbol if you want. You just do choose file, add it. On full arts, it looks a little funky because it's kind of like in front of what your art is. Uh, same for watermarks. I usually don't do it on the full arts, but I do custom watermarks on the non-full arts because I think that looks pretty good. You can kind of make your own unique set. Um, all right, so yeah, last thing we got to do is our one-eighth margin. So once you have everything set, you go to your frames, you'll click one-eighth margin. This is purely for NPC um, make playing cards. If you're not using make playing cards and you're going to print these out yourself on paper or some other way that's not make playing cards you do not need to do that and just just don't do it <laughs> in that case but for full arts it's the second one in you can kind of tell by the image that it goes to a full art so you just click it and it extends it out it doesn't look like it did anything but it did it extended it out um, and then depending on what frame you use you might actually use a different one and i will actually show two different cards we'll, we'll make two different cards just to show when you're ready click download and once it's up, you can check it out, make sure it looks good. As you can see, it's squared off. Got all your text, your art. If you want to mess with it, uh, you can just open with paint and remove whatever you want. I mean, you could leave it all. You can remove some things. But paint is where I go to make any kind of changes that I want to make. So if I wanted to just do like that, that right there doesn't make any sense to be there because of the way my card is. And then I don't like having the copyright. Um, because that's just one that's just one excuse to have your card not get printed from make playing cards i don't actually know if that alone will change that you can leave card conjure on there if you want just to show support and just to show hey when someone sees your card oh yeah you made on card conjure cool you don't need that to be there though that's totally optional if you want to remove it keep it remove it whatever um like I said, it's, it's totally up to you. Use it at your own discretion. If you want to keep it all cool, it's totally up to you. I'm just not going to do anything to it. I just wanted to show you that how simple it is if you do choose to do that. Um, so, yeah, we're done. And then what I usually do is I create a folder and I just start stacking up all the cards I want to make. But let's go ahead and do one more. This time, we'll just do a very, the most standard extended art you could do. So we can go to... Uh, you can do it from showcase or you can just do it from I think promos tall art and you'll just see extended art frames that's one that's like a quick way to get to it this will give you your um, your bigger extended art you'll see you have a 
big, huge art box and like a small text box. So if you want to do the, the shorter frames um, for extended art, I'd recommend going to let me clear it showcase and then extended art, which is like right there. Extended art regulars. Yeah, these are your actual like true to magic's extended art. So you'll do that. And then actually what's cool with these, you can actually even change this to a crown. Um, I like to get fancy with a lot of these, so I'll change it to a floating crown. Uh, boom. And then you can get a little bit fancier and you add a thing called an inner crown. And that will add a little area right there. So, boom. And then again, if you want a one-eighth, what, excuse me, one-eighth margin it. This is just a, I think it's just a standard, so it should be, yeah, just like that. And you'll see it adds an extra dimension. And then for art, we'll go in here, we'll just pick something. Uh, oh, yeah, this art's sick. Uh, this is like some battle with Kokaitis and um, the lizard men, I believe. That's what it looks like. Yeah, super cool. It kind of looks like he's <laughs> given the middle finger if you zoom in on it. Um, even though it's more of just like a claw blocking. But anyways, yeah. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want. As for the text, it's the same thing. If you don't want to auto-upload, you just want to do it manually. Um, you know, you just... You know, whatever it's going to be. I know it's plowshares, but you get the you get the gist. And then you can also do the import. But really, that's it. Um, to get a familiarity with the site, you really just got to play around with it. Play around with it. It can be a little finicky sometimes, or it can feel that way because the site works really well. But um, you just got to play around with it. I'll show you real quick watermarks, how much better they look when it's not full art. I think I have. Yeah, there's my Overlord Crest. Um, see how it looks all weird? You got to switch it to actual image boom I thought that looked really cool but when you go to like set symbols uh, like if I did that same set symbol it looks really bad it might look better with this one mmm not really yeah see I stay away from set symbols because I can't seem to ever get it right that one looks okay but you can just tell it's like a square image I guess so I just I just don't mess with it but you can you can actually look up and use like the real set symbols too if you if that's like your thing but anyway yep i just wanted to pretty much show how all that works with card conjurer you should get a basic understanding of it if you watch this video uh from the start to the end i really appreciate you guys watching it i will still try to answer additional questions you guys have um i can't really think of anything else at the moment that that was coming up about that i did want to address that whole removing of the art thing and i you know i didn't mean to offend anyone with that it was not meant to do that it was just just trying to show you guys how to make a card pretty much and that's how i had literally just previously made like 80 cards because of that custom deck so i was just on autopilot to remove it not all my cards are like that and some of the cards i've proxied are just npc fill based or still have things on there so um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video next up is going to be my overlord aloro altered deck the full deck profile i'll be going super in depth with them very excited to show it. I love it. It's like one of my favorite decks so far. Um, just, yeah, the I mean, the altars just really make it. So, yeah, anyways, guys, uh, have a good day, and uh, we'll see you again soon.